Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this 48th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole, brought to you by Smiley Spreezy Vapes. Special guests in this episode include actress Hannah Keppel, who plays the role of Moon in the series Cobra Kai. We'll also visit with actor Nicholas Cantu from The Walking Dead World Beyond, which is streaming now on AMC. We'll also visit with our good friend, country music artist Alice Remington, talking about her latest single, Uncommon Man. If you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and share with your friends. Like we mentioned, this episode brought to you by Smiley's Breezy Vapes, located at 313 Falcon Road here in Altus. They have red basket specials very often on their disposables, and their doors are now open. They have protective plexiglass. Masks are required to enter the building, and they must cover your nose and your mouth. They've got a great selection of new hardware, plus the largest selection of disposables in Southwest Oklahoma. That's all at Smiley's Breezy Vapes, 313 Falcon Road. Our first guest is actress Hannah Keppel. You know her as the role of Moon in the series Cobra Kai. First off, Hannah, thank you so much for taking the time. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Now, what do you think it is about Cobra Kai that is just, I, I mean, the last couple months, it has really grown some steam. And, and Hannah, how cool for you is it to see how it is just really picked up this year? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's amazing. I'm so lucky to be a part of this show. I mean, we knew how special it was um, filming it. And, and it's been so amazing to see the fan base grow and, and see all the original fans of the movies kind of you know, geek out over this new show that kind of explores new outlets and, and expands some of the original characters as well as bringing in new characters. So it's been, it's been really cool. Now has the, uh, was the Karate Kid series, was that something that, uh, that you had uh, delved into prior to the, before getting the part? Sure. So I had seen the first movie um, with family. We, we just watched it together. I, I love 80s movies, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 16 Candles, uh, Breakfast Club, you know, some of those are fantastic, you know, classic. Um, but I have to admit, I haven't seen the other movies, only the first one, um, but I love the first one. And so I was really excited to audition um, for this continuation of it. And what's it like to see some of the some of the previous characters that are that are now on the series as as obviously the lead characters on the on the show as well? How cool is it to see them and, and then take that memory, that trip down memory lane, if you will? Oh my gosh, it it was crazy. I, I was definitely starstruck the first time I I met Ralph and Billy. Um, it it's just so cool, and and my parents are so jealous. And actually, so I was sixteen, I believe, uh, when I when I filmed season one. So I had to have my um, my dad with me, and he was so excited to be on set and be able to meet those guys. So that was really cool. So it, we, we get to have the cool points reversed. Usually it's the parents trying to earn cool points with the kids, but but you kind of turned it around on them. That's pretty cool, Hannah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely got some brownie points with my parents. <laughs> now, the, the your character, Moon, what uh, what can we expect in the uh, in the upcoming episodes? Sure. So season three, it's coming out in January um, 8th, 2021. We're super excited. I can't divulge too much, but there's going to be a, a lot of new drama, some twists and turns, and some big fights that we can all look forward to. So it's going to be a good time. And, and how hard is it for you to keep things under wraps? I know uh, after production, uh, I mean, everybody signs the uh, the agreements not to disclose stuff, but how hard is that? Because uh, I, I know I'm, I'm a nerd. I, I would geek out and it would be so yeah. hard for me. Oh my gosh, yes. Especially with the crazy cliffhanger that happens in season two. Um, we filmed season three about a year ago, so it has definitely been hard not being able to share what happens. And I have all these cool behind the scenes pictures that I want to share. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, thank goodness the wait is going to be over soon. So January, we'll, we'll be able to share finally. And Hannah, what is uh, what is 2020 taught you about yourself? This is something I've been trying to ask everybody. What 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 have you learned about Hannah this year? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I I think I've really spent 2021. It's it's been a hard year for for a lot of people, a lot of different reasons. And, and personally, I've had a lot of things happen in my life that um, have really 
it's helped me grow as a person. And honestly, I, I looked at this time. I, I've been home with my family and, and working on new hobbies while we're home and I'm able to go out. And um, I, I've really been, been able to grow in a lot of ways and, and work on my craft. And and I'm excited for 2021. I'm excited to, to step into a new year, hopefully new possibilities and hopefully better than the last <laughs> Now, now, has 2020, has it has it kind of hindered imaginations or, or hopes and dreams maybe that you've had, or, or has it maybe solidified that uh, that, that all the decisions and, and the choices that you've been making are, are on the right path? Yeah, I mean, I have to admit it, it was hard. I, I made the big move out to L.A. at the beginning of the year, but then I had to come home because of COVID. Um, and then since I've been home, I, I have still felt a bit stuck, you know, with the film industry being shut down for a little bit. Thank goodness it's kind of slowly but surely coming back. Um, but I, I just, I feel like I, I've tried to take this time to just grow, especially as an actor, taking classes and reading books and, and doing all I can. So when I'm finally able to get back out there, I'll be ready. There you go. And you said uh, new season coming January 2021. Really looking forward to that. And it, that, that's one of the things about uh, the, the, those series is now you, you binge them and then it's like, oh, I got to wait a year. <laughs> right. Well, Hannah, exactly. if, if, if folks want to find out more information, not only about the show, but uh, everything you got going on social media wise. Yeah. So I, I'm on Instagram at Hannah Keppel. And if you guys love the show, the show has an Instagram as well, Cobra Kai series. So definitely look that up as well. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, Hannah, it has been uh, great to visit with you this morning. Hope you have a great weekend and uh, can't wait for the new season. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Again, thanks to Smiley's Breezy Vapes for helping me our sponsor for this episode. Stop in and see them and uh, check out some of their Red Basket specials. You can also call them for more information at 580-471-VAPE. That's 580-471-8273. They've got a great selection of new hardware, also the best selection of disposables flavors in Southwest Oklahoma. Stop by and see them at 313 Falcon Road. Our next guest is actor Nicholas Cantu. The series The Walking Dead World Beyond, streaming now on AMC. First off, Nicholas, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show. Thank you for having me, man. I'm glad to be here. Now, now tell us, Nicholas, uh, what what uh, what's it like to be a part of the whole Walking Dead world uh, a, a, as a first part? What's it, what's it like to be a part of uh, of that whole massive uh, expanse, if you will? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, I watched the original show when it came out back in uh, 2010, all that time ago. And so, kind of, you know, being a, a spectator of this universe all this time, it's been crazy to go from like a viewer to somebody who's now a part of it. And it's been this almost dreamlike experience, just getting to work on a show in the same universe. It's crazy. And uh, the the Walking Dead world beyond. If if, if folks haven't uh, followed after the Walking Dead, tell us a little bit about uh, the world beyond. And uh, I, I know your part, especially, has uh, has been pretty critical the last uh, couple episodes as well. Yeah, I mean, I've been having a blast on the show, and it's uh, well, we're basically ten years into the apocalypse now, and so we we follow the perspective of four young adults or teenagers, uh, and they've come of age in this apocalypse. They're, they're learning to become adults in this broken world. And so you get to see their journey from Nebraska to New York, and you, uh, you see how they evolve, you see how the world around them changes. And uh, my character's Elton, and he's uh, the youngest of the group. He's only 14. And uh, he, he's very intellectual. His brain leads every action that he takes. So he's very calculated. Uh, he knows karate. He's a black belt in karate, which is great for stunts and killing zombies. And uh, it's just a blast of a show to be on, and uh, people are liking it. So I'm, I'm glad to be a part of something so cool. Now, Nicholas, how close to the to the role of Elton do you find yourself uh, personally? Um, pretty close. I mean, I'm I'm not even a, a black belt in karate or anything. <laughs> it's nothing of the sorts. That's uh, that's probably where I see the the most difference is in our uh, martial arts skills. But uh, other than that, I mean. He's just kind of going at the apocalypse in a similar way I would, you know? Like, he's, he's documenting what he sees out there. He has a camera, and he takes pictures of a certain specimen, and he has a manuscript that he's filling out with just 
the things he sees out in nature. And it's a very like peaceful approach to exploring this like fire ridden world with zombies and crazy people that are trying to kill you. And he's just taking like the National Geographic approach. I kind of like it. And Nicholas, when you when you come into the, the Walking Dead, the world beyond, I mean, how much pressure did you put on yourself knowing the the, the way the franchise has uh, has been followed in the first place? Uh, I mean, th- there always has to be a sense of pressure with everything you do because if there's not, I mean, what's what's pushing you to do good? So I, I definitely had the sense of pressure of like, oh man, the show's been on for ten years. It's a really big show. There's a bunch of fans for it. I have to really come out swinging and you know hope that they like me. Um, but the other half of it is just, you know, having fun and not letting it phase you too much because, you know, a little nerves will keep you going, but too many nerves, and, you, know, you don't you don't go anywhere. It just kind of freezes you up. So I, I kept like a, uh, a sizable amount of nerves going into it where I was, uh, you know, keeping it important and uh, doing my best. And it was a blast. Well, well, Nicholas, you are one of the youngest that I've had the opportunity to talk to this year. So I'm going to ask on your perspective, what is what is 2020 been like from uh, from a younger perspective? I mean, how how have you been able to try to keep some semblance of sanity through all this? Oh, man, it's just it's just, what a year. What a year it's been from January to now. So much has changed. So much crazy stuff has gone down for me. It's, it's really less been about keeping the stuff that's been normal and just waiting for it to go back to normal. I mean, when the news broke out, there's this coronavirus. This kind of old thing was to, you know, go into lockdown and just be safe. And so I, I've kind of kept that up. And, like, it's it's been less about, oh, man, uh, how do I, you know, keep the stuff that I had before? And it's more like, well, I wonder when I'm going to get back to this stuff because I feel like, uh, mostly in my life. I mean, Hollywood is pretty shut down. It's been really slow with auditions. And nobody's filming anything. And so it's just, it's, it's really been a waiting game for me. It's almost like waiting for this year to be over for the next to bring more opportunities. If that even happens, man, it's like, it's day by day. You never know what's going to happen next. So you just kind of sit back and just see what the world has in store for you. And I've also asked uh, some some of the older dogs. I've asked them what they've learned the most, and and you know most of them give me technology is what they talk about that they've gotten more comfortable with that they're going to use moving forward. What if what have you taken in this year that, uh, that that's going to help you moving forward? Um, I've taken a lot to myself. I mean, when you spend inside in quarantine, you really get to know who's like piloting your body, which is your brain. And so, I mean, I've learned a lot about patience for sure, because I thought this was going to be over super quick. Everybody at my school was like, oh, man, we get an extra week of spring break. <laughs> well, it's, it's November now, and it's, I guess it's just the longest spring break record history of the world. Um, but, yeah, I've definitely learned lessons of patience. And, Nicholas, if folks want to find out not only more information about the show, uh, upcoming episodes, uh, and where they can stream it, also where they can keep up with everything you got going social media-wise as well, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and I make YouTube videos all under the alias Junkie Janker. So just look that up on your Google machine, and you'll find it, hopefully. <laughs> there you go. Well, Nicholas, it's been great to visit with you this morning. I, I hope you have a great weekend and continued success on the show, my friend. Thank you. Again, thanks for our sponsor, Smiley's Breezy Babes. Stop in and see them at 313 Falcon Road here in Altus. Their doors are open. They do have protective plexiglass in place, but masks are required to cover your nose and your mouth as you enter the building. They have a great selection of new hardware, whether that be mods, tanks, batteries, any of that stuff, coils. They've got it for you. If they don't have your favorite, they'll order it for you. Give them a call, 580 471 vape all right guys our final guest on the podcast today uh, i like to call her a friend in the music industry as well uh dallas remington and uh, dallas we've known each other for a few years uh, this is the first podcast visit though that we've had yes it has been it's been several yeah this is the first podcast i think we met like in 2017 16 yeah it's been a while. Yeah, it it's was my first that. radio tour. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, now Dallas uh, got the the new single that we've been playing, uh, "Uncommon Man." And what has what has this single been like this year, as opposed to any of the singles before? Yeah. So this one, actually, you know, we were like, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen because everything's in a weird place, and 
we've just, this thing was just blown my mind. Actually, we charted in a week with it, which has never happened. And, you know, we've flown up the charts. I think we got to 26 so far. And um, I feel like it was, for me, this is a song that it felt, it felt perfect to put it out. And then it, the response we've gotten, it was a good time for it, you know, cause we, we dedicated the song to essential employees and I've getting messages every day about how much the song means to people. So it's just been a blessing um, to see this, you know, in such a dark time of the world to see a little bit of light just through the song in my life and she and other people's lives. So it's been a, it's really been a different experience, um, especially not being able to radio tour, which has been so crazy. Um, but you know, it's been the chart numbers and everything. It would have been just a blessing. We're 26 on music row and 46 on billboard. It's my first billboard single ever. So we're just like freaking out over here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your reaction when you got the, got the, got the news that you had actually charted billboard? What was that like? I screamed really loudly. <laughs> um, it was crazy. So we, um, we started working with a new promoter over on billboard. Um, his name's doc Gonzalez. And he was like, okay, it takes a really long time to chart on billboard, especially for an independent artist that's never done a billboard single before. And I think we charted in seven weeks. Wow. So I was just like, Oh my gosh, like what is happening right now? And I think we're going to continue working it until January over on billboard. So we're going to keep on growing and um, I'm super excited. You know, it's been crazy and you see your name, which obviously with working with music row, all the big guys are on that one as well. And, but to see your name like on, a chart just with all of like surrounded by little big town and Darius Rucker and all these people. It's like, these are my heroes. And they're literally like, I'm above them. I was above Taylor Swift one week and I cried. I was like, <laughs> past Taylor Swift, but then she passed this quickly again. So, <laughs> but you know, it's been really cool. Um, we're super excited. And then we ended up, we found out we charted on media base as well. I think we're top 60 over there. So it's just been like a whirlwind, like, oh my gosh, all this stuff is happening and just trying to keep up with it, trying to enjoy the moment while we're in it. But then also like, what are we going to do next? <laughs> <laughs> and, and enjoying it while you're in it. Uh, talk about that uh, because you have to, it's got to be more personal this time around. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, which I've written all my songs we've ever released, but this is one that, you know, we wrote this specifically, Courtney and I wrote this specifically for our dads and we didn't think anyone would ever hear the song besides them. You know, we pitched it and we wanted big artists to cut it and all this stuff. But then, you know, the fact that I ended up getting to release it um, and dedicate it to my dad and dedicate it to everybody was just, um, was just amazing. And it's been such a, um, a heartwarming experience with this single. And I'm just, yeah, it's just, blow my mind especially because I'm like we can't even meet with people we can't and you know radio tour normally really helps a single and so I'm like we haven't met with anyone we haven't <laughs> seen anyone we like I'm just doing virtual shows and you know we got um we're doing so well on the charts over there and then I think we're we're over 400,000 streams across the board and I've never done anything close to that on stream so it's just been um I try not to cry a lot, but I've cried a lot more over this single than I feel like I have any others. <laughs> yeah, you talked about doing the virtuals, and uh, what I like to get from artists is uh, now you've had a few under your belt. So, what's what's the learning curve? What what did you learn from the first show that you've had to rem remind yourself each each following one? Yeah, on all the virtual, um, have a good internet connection. <laughs> that's really annoying um and make sure you put your phone on do not disturb if you're doing it from your phone because my first takeover I did was for a big station out of Kentucky and I think I got six phone calls in the middle of that takeover and by the end you can just see that I'm so mad my mom's like you look like you're about to cry I'm like because they wouldn't stop calling um but you know learn from that make sure your phone's on do not disturb make sure you got good internet and uh just go with the flow because people will throw some weird requests at you and people will just, you know, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> now what's the, what's the best piece of feedback that you've had from uncommon man? Oh my goodness. Um, I actually, I got a message this morning actually, cause they're all still coming in all the time. I got a message from someone um, who's actually friends with my co-writer and she's like, you know, I finally got the opportunity to go see my dad. I sat down I played this for him and he started crying before the first verse was even over because it reminded him of his dad and everything. And it's just like stories like that. It's like, that's why we wrote the song. We wanted 
to to touch people who've lived through this and have have that uncommon man or woman and so just I've had so many like that and then from radio you know I've gotten people uh radio friends messaging me like dude first spin we had somebody call in crying because they love the song so much and that's just that's my my goal is you know and all of us as artists we don't even we don't even really know it but part of our dream is to to help change people through music and the fact that this song has helped and has touched so many people um just through many different things has just been insane (laughs) And I told you, we never know, you never know how the format on this thing is going to go, but you, you did such a great introduction. I'd be awful if I didn't let you just pick up that guitar and, and and play that for us. Uh, Yeah. We've talked so much about it. Let you take over. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Well, here we go. It's Uncommon Man. There's no such thing as 40 hours. No working nine to five. Blood, sweat, and tears. Praying to God, help me survive. Through droughts and floods and never ending days. And disaster years, he tries to keep his faith. He has holes in his jeans. He didn't buy them that way. And when he shakes your hand, you have his word and he'll take it to the grave. For he falls asleep at night, he reads the Bible by his bed. And he thanks the Lord for an everyday life of an uncommon man. He does his best to support his kids and his wife. Sometimes he might miss daddy, but he still touched them in and out. Church and chores are still family affairs. Yet to him no other life can compare. He has holes in his jeans. He didn't buy them that way. And when he shakes your hand, you have his word and you'll take it to the grave. For he falls asleep at night, he reads the Bible by his bed. And he thanks the Lord for an everyday life of an uncommon man. I sound like a poor man's life, but he's richer than any millionaire. He has holes in his jeans, he didn't buy them that way. And when he shakes your hand, you have his word, and you take it to the grave, for he falls asleep at night. He reads the Bible by his bed, and he thanks the Lord for an everyday life of an uncommon man. An uncommon man. That's why we talk so much about it, man. That's good stuff. And, uh, you, you know, Dallas, I, I, I take, uh, extreme pride in the, the young artists that we've been able to, to be friends with over the years. And, uh, when I, the first time I spun that one, I, I mean, it was just, it was pride with, with, with the great work that you did on that one. And, uh, I'm sure what, what was your dad's reaction? Yeah. When we wrote that one, um, it was, like I said, we wrote it just for him. Uh, and just for her dad and so that was the goal we made it perfect for them and my dad started crying and he's like that's the song that is the song so then when it came back um because we had originally planned on releasing a different song in may and then i just didn't feel like it was right you know we're different times in the world i just i was like this isn't the song yet um so we went back and we re evaluated things i sent a bunch of songs to the team because we didn't have anything else cut we had nothing cut it was the end of April and we were expected to have a new single out by the end of May. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so I sent them a bunch of songs and I actually sent that one to them, like a really rough work tape of it 
didn't even send them the demo. I was just like, oh, by the way, I have the song. And we got on a meeting and my entire team was like, that's the single. That is the song. Uncommon Man is it. And when I called dad, I was like, well, you know, the team, the team picked Uncommon Man. He's like, yeah, because they're smart. And I was like, <laughs> okay, dad. Okay. And he was like, this is going to be it. This is the one that's going to do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to believe you. Um, and so the fact that we've broken so many personal records for me off of the song just proves that dad's always right. So, <laughs> so see that the, the 2020 is uh, obviously been an, an inspiration for you. I mean, that's something I've asked a lot of writers, uh, whether it has inspired them aside from uncommon man, was there a, a lot of other inspi- inspiration in songs that you, you were able to write over the time as well? Yeah. So we've written several songs. Um, I, you know, I've been trying to do zoom rights uh, and trying to get used to that. So I've written quite a few and I've gotten, I've ended up with a few out of, out of this that we're planning on cutting in the future um and they've already become staples in my live show even though they're live streams and stuff like that but um so yeah so luckily i've been able to stay productive and um try to stay as positive as possible and you know mom and i have a business where we flip houses so we've been working on that constantly and then as long as as well as music so um yeah we've had some some good things come out of this year you know all things considered i know some people um have been a lot less fortunate um, but you know, we've been trying to make the best out of it. That's right. And Dallas, if, if folks want to find out more about the, not only the single, but about the virtual shows and, uh, eventually some of those live shows we're looking forward to as well. Yes. Yeah. You can go to Dallas Remington.com Dallas, like the city and Remington, like the shotgun or the curling arm, whichever one you choose. <laughs> and, uh, so it's just Dallas Remington.com. And from there, it's got the links to all my socials, um, where you can find the music. It's got my show schedule, which I need to go update, but it has all that on there. So y'all can find it all there. All right. Well, Dallas, always great to visit with you yeah, again. Thank you for your time and, uh, man alive. Uh, I- I'm so proud of the new single as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So good to see you. <laughs> There you go. Well, uh, Dallas, have a great weekend. You too. Again, thanks for joining us for this 48th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole, brought to you by our friends at Smiley's Breezy Vapes. If you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, just find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for the podcast, go ahead and click the support tab and follow the instructions. If you have a special guest idea, email me gq with cam at gmail.com we'll be back with episode 49 coming up on monday <laughs>